I guess we're making this video, so. I'm <laughs> oh, I've been so nervous to record this. Right, here we go. Hello everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's the first video of 2024, and yes, this is something completely, completely different to what I've done before. Um, my name is Evan O'Hanlon, for any of you that don't know, I'm 25 years old, I'm from Waterford in Ireland, and a year ago I got a, well I made a life changing decision, and I got myself a hair transplant. Most people that don't know, I'm an actor, and in the performing arts industry, and having a bad hairline really, really knocked my confidence. Because when you walk into a, an audition room, and you look at everybody else who has black hair, blue eyes, five foot eight, the same height as you, and you going in feeling unconfident, it affects your auditions, affects your mentality, your confidence gets an all-time low, and even just everyday life. Always worried about what way the wind was blowing my hair, because I'd look like Donald Trump going along like that with my fringe. Like when you go to the barbers and they spray your hair and you can just see it, it just made me feel so insecure. And I used to wear a hat the whole time as well if I didn't have a shower and do my hair so nobody would notice. And it just consumed me. So yeah, I just said enough is enough. I'm sick of feeling insecure, unconfident when I'm walking in a room and having this constant self-hatred when looking at myself in the mirror. So I decided to do some research. So I stumbled across Instagram. I saw a few places in Turkey, but my problem was with the people in Turkey. I didn't want to translate to somebody to then translate to the doctor and something get misinterpreted and... I didn't get the hairline that I wanted. Yes, it might have been half the price, but that was just a big risk that I didn't want to take. So I had to say to myself, right, I need to look for somewhere in the UK. And I came across the wonderful team at KSL Clinic. They do a lot on social media, so that's kind of how I heard about them. But I also heard about a few celebrities that had got it done, like uh, Jack from Love Island, Kieran Nichols. Uh, he had Gals from Geordie Shore. Um... And so on and so forth. There was many of them that got their hairline done at KSL Clinic. So I decided I'll just reach out to the guys and see what the story is. Yeah, so I just messaged the guys at KSL Clinic um, and said, listen, could I book in a free consultation? Which is amazing. Um, and I said, yeah, no worries. So I gave them my details on the website um, and they got in touch with me. And they booked me in, in I think it was September, yeah, it was September 2022. Uh, they booked me in for my free consultation. So they basically, they bring you in. It's all for free. They sit you down. They talk about the whole procedure, um, what they think I need, what I want, a uh, rough estimate of the price, etc. And make you, and just give you lots of information so you can go away and have a think. You don't have to book it on the day. They told me, listen, go away, have a think about it, and come back when you're ready. Um, and they made, they made me feel at ease because I was, yes, I was educated on places to go, but... On the actual procedure, I didn't know a lot. So they really put my mind at ease and kind of gave me the confidence to go, do you know what, I'm, I'm going to do it. Because I was I was up the walls with nerves when I was deciding I wanted to get it done. So when I was at the cons free consultation, uh, they recommended a tablet called Finistride. And basically what this tablet does in its most simplest form, it um, stops you from losing any further hair. Uh, prevents any further loss from the hair that you have and keeps that and retains that and grows that back stronger so you won't lose any more hair but you do have to allow I think it's like six months for that to kick in so I got that tablet straight away they recommended a website called Dr. Fox which is probably the cheapest place you'll get Finistride and it's not that expensive you can get like a month package a three month package or a six month uh, package uh, worth of tablets so I always went for the six month uh, tablets and I still take that to the to this day because post-op it's a way of maintaining the new hairs that you've got and stops them from falling out as well so if you are thinking about getting a hair transplant or you have a receding hairline I would first go on Finistride and that will maintain the hair that you've got and stop any further hair from falling out the months kind of building up to getting the procedure done were strange because I felt like it was a bit of a fever dream. I was like, oh yeah, I'm getting it done in January. Yeah, I'm getting it done in January. Then it was like September, October, November, December. And all of a sudden, it was January 17th. And I was going, how did we get here? I never fully kind of processed that I was getting it done. Because it felt like it was a lifetime away. So I remember waking up 
at like what was it, half four in the morning, five in the morning, the day of the procedure. The whole procedure is done in one day, which is fantastic. Um, but I remember waking up the morning of that procedure and kind of being like, oh my God, how is this getting, like, how, how is this, how is this day arrived? I was, I was like a bundle of nerves going around. And I remember arriving to the KSL clinic in Maidstone in Kent. My dad drove me. My wonderful dad came over from Ireland. So I had a lift there and back and someone that could help me in the first few days, like cook and all that kind of stuff. Um, So I remember him dropping me off and I was sitting in the reception and with the lovely receptionist and she was keeping me at ease. Like, she said, do you have any questions? Blah, blah, blah. Um, But I remember just sitting there and everybody was talking to me and I was just like, I have no idea what you're saying to me right now. I have no idea. I am so nervous. I was looking around kind of going, Oh my God, it's the fear of the unknown. That's exactly what it is. It's the fear of the unknown. I was like, because you can post about it on social media so many times, but unless you have somebody that's actually gone through it, it's um, it's scary. And I was shit in a brick. I can't lie. But the team at KSL Clinic were amazing at putting me at ease. Like they made me feel so welcome even though I was a bundle of nerves and absolutely shitting it, they made me feel so welcome and really did put my mind at ease um, and helped calm my nerves. Because I remember the day of the procedure, you go upstairs, you talk to your wonderful doctor who does the procedure. And mine was Dr. Deschel that did my procedure. Um he went through everything with me, went through the whole day with me and then brought me in to meet the rest of the team. And I'm, and they give you a lovely skin fade on the back and sides so they can take the particles out and then they shave right in on your hairline. And I remember just looking in the mirror going, oh my God, this is happening. Something you've wanted for such a long time is finally happening. And I just got overwhelmed by nerves. And then the lovely team, Dr. Nichelle and his lovely assistants, they drew in my hairline of what they thought was best and then we could make adjustments so I was like could you bring this down they're like yeah but I think this would go here and blah 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 so they really work with you on achieving the hairline of your dreams and um, so when that was done um, it's time for numbing the back of your head now that's probably the worst bit of the whole day the whole procedure is actually quite calm and it's quite handy you sit in a chair and you watch Netflix pretty much for the whole day um, but the needle in the back of the head is for like two minutes straight and that's to numb the back of your head so they can take out the hair follicles. That, that was really sore. It, the way I describe it was like a scratching on the skull, but it's only two minutes. You can get through it. You breathe, you breathe through it. The doctors um, really go through it with you um, and you get hit by basically this adrenaline rush um, from the anesthetic. But as soon as that's in, when they're extracting all the hair follicles, you don't feel a thing. You don't feel a single thing. You're just lying down. I actually kind of fell asleep when I was in the chair after the needle. But the needle at the start is the worst part of it all. And if you're not a fan of needles, still, it's fine. You can get through it. It's two minutes uh, It's two minutes of pain for the, being happy for the rest of your life and have the hairline you've always wanted. So it's worth it. Um, so yeah, they numb the back of your head and then for about two and a half hours they extract the follicles and you're lying flat down on this bed. And when I tell you, I fell asleep. I genuinely fell asleep. But there was one point when I turned over and I could feel blood trickling down the side of my head and I was like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And the team were like, you okay? And I was like, yeah. I was like, what is that? They were like, look, don't worry, it's a bit of blood. And I was like, ah, okay, <sighs> back to normal. Um, But yeah, that was the only kind of scary bit and the needle was the sorest part of the whole entire day um, and when, when they're doing that you're literally you feel like you could fall asleep you don't feel anything they're playing a bit of music in the background and it's really comfortable I was talking to them for some of it as well um, and they were telling me what was going on so it, it was great it was simple so then after that they ease you up gently and um, just to get the blood flow back around your body and they give you a fizzy drink and a sandwich just to kind of increase your sugar levels after the first part of the op but yeah that was probably the worst bit of the whole day was the needle in the back of the head but it's so worth it it's two minutes of pain for being happy for the rest of your life with a good hairline um so i'll take it but yeah that was definitely the worst part of it so yeah after lunch dr nichelle came back in and just double checked i was happy with the line that they were doing for my hairline i was like yep yeah, that's all great 
And then what they do is they have to numb the top of your head so they can put the follicles in the transplanted area and create your hairline. And honestly, after getting the needle in the back of your head, the needles on top are a piece of piss. They, re- they, re- they really are. Um, it's like night and day with pain. There's like a little twinge, but it's so minute compared to the back of your head. It's so fine. So after they numb that, they just check everything to see, can you feel anything? And I remember I was like, I can still feel something there. So they put a bit more in. And until you're happy that you can't feel anything, then they go, right, we're going to do the little kind of slits in your head to put the follicles in. So then Dr. Nashal said to me, what do you want on the TV? So I remember putting on, I think I watched Knives Out on the TV on Netflix. So as he's making the incisions in my head and lining it all up for the girls to put the follicles in, I literally sat back and watched Knives Out on Netflix. It was that chill. Um, And after that was done, the girls then come back in and then they put all the follicles in the transplanted area. And again, you cannot feel a thing. It was the, looking back on it now, it was the easiest procedure I've ever done or I've ever gotten. You don't feel any pain except for the two minutes of the needle and then a little bit on top when they put the needles on the top of your head. But honestly, after getting this done, up top, it's like night and day. Um, so that was the worst part was the numbing of it. You, When it comes to actually the incisions and taking the hair out and putting the hair in on top, you do not feel a thing. Um, you're literally chilling watching Netflix. So it's actually quite a nice little day out. The hardest part about the whole procedure is post-op. Now they give you a full, so at the end of your day, you watch this video of a full breakdown of your post-op and what's going to happen day by day. They also give you a wonderful leaflet with everything that's going to happen and all the things you need to do, you need to do step by step um, for the next 14 days post-op because you should take a minimum of 14 days recovery. So the team went through all that with me and looking back on it all, the recovery is the worst part of it. The actual day and procedure is the easy bit. Um, and the team give you a lovely aftercare kit with all the things that you need, um, all the sprays, all the numbing pain, cocodamol, everything that you need, antibiotics uh, for your, the next 14 days. They give it all to you and they give you a lovely uh, neck brace because you have to sleep upright for the next 14 days. One thing I will say is do not use the one they give you at the clinic. I would recommend, and they recommend this as well, because they only give you like a blow-up one. If you go on Amazon and get a memory foam uh, neck pillow, game changer. Absolute game changer. So I recommend buying one. I got mine for like 10 quid on Amazon. So get that first before the operation so you have it on the first night, because I didn't. I only got it the day of the procedure and arrived the next day. So for my first night sleep, I was with the little blow-up one, which isn't great, but the memory foam one is a purchase you need to get for the recovery. It's a it's a game changer. I actually did vlog the kind of step-by-step journey of how I felt on each day post-op. So what I'm going to do is let those videos play so you can just see raw reactions and what I actually felt on the day as opposed to me trying to describe it now and sugarcoat it. Um, I vlogged it all, so I'm going to play those clips for you now so you can kind of get an exact... Uh, honest reaction of how I was feeling on each day post-op. So it is post-op day one. I'm feeling actually okay. I'm feeling okay. I just took the bandage off. Um, There was a little bit of bleeding, but I held it down on them for about five minutes, like they said, and then all oh, was good, so the bleeding has stopped. Um, I was really nervous about taking the bandage off. That was a big concern, and I felt a bit sick this morning taking it off because I just wasn't know. I didn't know what to expect. But um, yeah, it's all good. It's all looking good. I feel okay. Last night, my neck is killing me from sleeping upright like this all night. But I actually got sleep, which is good. I was told I probably won't sleep the first night and I actually slept. Now, it was on and off, but I still slept and I still got a bit of sleep. So I'm not completely wrecked this morning. Um, as far as pain is concerned, I was sore last night. Today, it's just more like a swelling type sensation. Um, and a little bit of sore, it's a little bit stingy, but it's actually fine, it's bearable. Do you take your cocodamol? And then I took my antibiotic this morning and I sprayed with Celine as well. Uh, on I think it's Celine, is it Celine? Yeah, Celine, I sprayed with Celine. Um, this on this place on my don't on my transplant area, I can't even think or speak properly. You can see the swelling starting here in my forehead. I'm just I'm just 
what's making me anxious is waiting for my face to swell because I know it's coming. Good morning, everyone. It is day two of post-op for the hair transplant. Last night, I didn't sleep too great. Um, The feeling was like I could feel every hair poking up. It was like a stinging, raw pain. It's like I could feel every new hair in the transplanted area. It was quite sore. So I woke up during the night by two in the morning, took some paracetamol, stayed up on my phone for a while, kind of fell back to sleep. This sleep position isn't the best, sleeping up like this. Um, it is quite difficult, but look, <laughs> no pain, no gain. It'll be worth it in the long run, hopefully. But um, yeah, last night wasn't a great night's sleep. Had a cup of coffee for the first time in a couple of days, which was unbelievable. But yeah, I was in a bit of pain last night. Could feel every fiber of the transplant just coming through it felt like it was coming through the skin that's the only way to describe the the kind of pain it was um i'm quite swollen now in my forehead as you can see but overall it's not too bad but last night was the first night of of uh not sleeping and discomfort and pain hopefully tonight will be better but we move tomorrow. I get to put the cream on the back of my donor area. My head is starting to get really itchy as well. That's something I should note. It got very itchy last night and I noticed myself trying to scratch my head and then stopping myself. So that's something to be aware of is that when the itching comes, you just really can't. But it's hard when you're asleep and you naturally just go to do it if you try to stop yourself. I did it once last night, but I didn't touch the donor area, thankfully. So it is day three post-op and like the doctor said, my face will start to be swollen. I look like I've done 10 rounds with Katie Taylor right now. Um, yeah, it's very weird. Um, I'm hoping this swelling goes quickly. Um, last night I actually slept, which was nice. I went in the living room for a while and then my neck cushion actually felt comfortable then when I went to bed because I hadn't used it for a few hours. So I slept last night, which is good. Woke up at about seven, but that was just discomfort in my neck because of stiffness. Um, but overall I got a great night's sleep. Um, all things considered. Today I put the Savlon cream on the back of my donor area. I was going to get my dad to do it, but I decided I may as well get used to doing it on my own because he goes tomorrow. Um. So yeah, it's just it's mainly just itchy at the moment. There's no real pain. I'm taking paracetamol every four hours, but um, it's mainly just pain. Oh, sorry, it's mainly just itching at the moment. Um, which you know what is fine. I can deal with that. And then this swelling. So I'm hoping this swelling goes down over the next few days but yeah day three is more so of the swelling and itching more than anything else so let's see what this day brings and if everything goes well today i will catch up with you all tomorrow for day four good morning so it is day four post op um of the hair transplant last night i slept okay i said goodbye to my dad i had to go up a half four to say goodbye um and then my this morning my head was really really sore really sore and I felt quite dizzy and I felt really sluggish this morning waking up so it wasn't the best start to the day the swelling is kind of moved from my forehead now yesterday was mainly in here and now it's draining down into here um which is fine it doesn't hurt it just makes my face feel really heavy it makes me feel tired but what's sore at the moment is the back of my head that's where it's really itching now because I started putting that cream on and it's where it's uh starting to be a little sore it's not like painful painful but you can feel it um but it could be worse but that's the update this morning if anything happens on later on in the day i will fill you in hopefully nothing happens and if not i'll talk to you on day five when we finally get to wash my hair in the baby shampoo hello everyone so it is day six post-op we're nearly a week since we had the transplant which is crazy um it's gone very fast slow but fast today's update is swelling has kind of gone from my face there's not much swelling left at all I feel a bit more human today, but the only thing I will say is there isn't the itching or the itchingness throughout my whole head. The itchiness throughout my whole head is a killer. All I want to do is just claw and scratch my head and I can't. That's what the problem is at the moment. It's not even the transplanted area isn't as bad. The back area is where it's really itchy and in and hurts every now and again. It's little sharp pains every now and again. Uh, it gets itchy up here, don't get me wrong, but um, it's mainly just itchiness and sharp pain at the back and a little bit of itchiness at the front is what I'm experiencing today on day six. So it's day 12 post-op and I'm feeling good. As you can see, it's all starting to crack and starting to fall out, which was to happen. 
Um, I'm looking forward to having a proper shower and washing my hair properly. That is something I'm really looking forward to. As in terms of pain and itchiness, that's all gone. There's only like a little burning sensation on the top is the only way to describe it, but I feel like that's when it's just hardening up and all the skin is hardening. My face has been very, very dry. Um, so that's something to note. I don't know if it's just my skin of how it's reacting because of not being able to wash properly, but um, yeah, my skin has been very dry, so I started looking after that properly the last couple of days. Um, but overall, I'm just looking forward to getting back and being able to shower properly and getting out and about again. Uh, the resting has finally got to me and I've ha finally had enough. So I actually wanted to share another update. It's the 6th of February. I had my surgery on the 17th of January. And it's now going through the phase where it's all uh, crusting and starting to fall out. But something I, that happened to me was I tried on a new top that was tight fit. And the collar bounced back and hit it and some load of it fell out. And it's a scary feeling when it starts to fall out because you might just barely touch it and then it falls out. I've not been picking at it, pulling it, but if you touch off it sometimes, it just all falls out. And it's a scary process. I stood looking at this t-shirt that had all the hair on it then for about 10, sec 10 to 15 seconds panicking. But you got to just trust, trust the process. But yeah, I just wanted to document when that happens. It is scary. Um... And it's such a weird feeling because you, you feel like you've ruined the whole transplant. But I need to have confidence in that the root is there and that it's not my fault. But, you know, it's um, I just wanted it all to fall out now. I just want all the scabbing to go because that's the annoying bit. But hopefully it starts to go. We're week three now. Um, be a month next week. So, yeah, hopefully it all starts to fall out and I can start the growing process. Also, something to note is... They recommend 14 days, but I took three weeks recovery because my logic was I'm after spending so much money on getting the hairline done. If I can, if you can afford to take the extra week, I would highly recommend it. And it's also great if you can have someone there just to kind of, especially in the first five to six days, to help cook and clean so you're not bending down and risking moving the follicles. It's great to have someone there. Like my dad came over, bless him, all the way over from Ireland uh, to help me. So he cooked, had breakfast, lunch and dinner for me every single day. I was able to do my washing for me, etc, etc. Um, so I would recommend having someone there that can uh, help you out around the house whilst you're recovering. And also what really helped me and I think made my hairline so good was that I was eating right. I was eating vegetables. I was eating good proteins. I wasn't eating a lot of processed food. I was eating quite well throughout the process. So that I think that really did help speed up recovery. And then post-op after the three weeks cardio getting the blood pumping in around the brain i think that's what really helped stimulate my growth because the growth of my hair was was quite quick um so i would highly recommend working out lifting weights but more importantly doing a lot more cardio after your 14 days are up just to get blood pumping around the around the brain and it really helps stimulate the growth post-op so four months after you get the procedure done um, you do a thing called PRP which basically is they take your blood spin it around really fast the machine and you get this like liquid gold which is like a rich plasma which they extract and they inject into the front of your hairline which basically helps stimulate growth and help thicken and strengthen the hair in your hairline so I got that done at four months I think it was like it was four months and then like a month later, so the fifth month, and then I got it nine months post op, and I'll get it, I'll get it quite soon, um, a year after the operation. So I took that as a way of like just help stimulating the growth of my hair, um, and help strengthen and thicken it, whilst also still taking Finasteride. So that's something to note. You do get a discount on that, um, if you have gotten your hairline done with them. If not, I think the procedure costs you around five hundred pounds. So I think. Why everybody is in this video is to know how much did it cost. Because let's be real, when it comes to getting this done, you need the funds. And everyone wants to know how much it's going to set them back. Um, For me, it cost me around £6,000. Well, it cost me bang on £6,000. But what I will say, it that's subjective to what you need done and how many follicle you need. I think I had 1,600 to 1,900 grafts or follicles. Um, so that cost me £6,000, but it could be more, it could be slightly less, depending on what you need done. So that is just for what I needed for my hairline. 
And the great thing about KSL Clinic is you can either pay that up front or you can do interest-free uh, pay-as-you-go plans or monthly plans. That's what I did. So basically, what well, how I did it was the day I decided I wanted to get the operation and get the hairline sorted, I paid a £1,200 deposit. And then the day of the procedure, I paid a further £1,800. So that left me with three grand left to pay off. And what the team did, they said, if you want to pay it monthly, you can. So I did. So for a year later, then I paid £250 a month, interest-free, and then it was paid off. People go, which I think is quite reasonable, £250 a month is not that bad. Like, you pay that, you pay more on a car a month. Um, So the way I looked at it is, like, 250 quid for one year, I'll suck it up and do it. And it was great. It made it affordable for me. I didn't have the six grand to pay it up front at the time. So to pay it off monthly was a big stress relief um, for myself. So, yeah, that's how I did it. I paid £1,200 deposit, £1,800 a day of the procedure, and then I paid £250 a month interest-free for one year post-op. And that's how much it cost me. God, this has taken me about an hour to record this video, and I still don't think I've gotten everything I wanted to say across. Um, but yeah, that has been my experience um, of getting my hairline done. It was the best decision I have ever made. By far. My confidence is is now back and through the roof I can experiment with different hairstyles and I can jump out of a pool and not worry about which way my hair is going jump out of a pool yeah because I'm swimming the whole time but you know what I mean um for anybody that is considering it please just book a free consultation with the guys at KSL clinic it can't do you any harm they'll go through everything in detail with you put your mind at ease and they'll give you a rough estimate of price on what it would cost to do your specific hairline if you have any more questions about the procedure or any thoughts, feelings or concerns, please feel free to leave them down in the comment section below and I will get back to you. Or if you want to message me privately on Instagram, uh, feel free to do that too and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. But it's just, I wanted to make this video purely to have more insight for people on what getting a hair transplant is like and kind of break this weird stigma that I feel is surrounded by getting a hair transplant um and just make people feel like they're not alone and that other lads at 25 years of age feel it too um and feel insecure about their hairline and that you have someone that you just know someone that's gotten it done and has given you their honest thoughts and given you a little insight to what it was like for the whole entire day because i didn't have that i didn't have anybody i could reach out to and talk to about it so that's kind of the whole point of making this video is that you too have someone that you know now has gotten it done and you can have a bit more insight to the whole procedure and the whole thing. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked what you saw, please like, subscribe, comment down below and stay tuned for further updates. And I hope this inspired other people that were thinking about getting it done to kind of get that get up and go and start making the first moves to getting the hairline of your dreams. So thank you so much for watching. Good luck.